We have a project coming up for an upscale retail customer where aesthetics is very important. Part of the specifications is they want the notification appliances to be hidden until the system goes into alarm. There are special products for that, so let's take a look at what we're going to be using. The FAFX series, those are ceiling mounted devices. We're going to get them from Concealer Light. The FA900 series are wall mounted devices. Looking at the data sheet, this indicates they draw 600 milliamps each, so we need to account for the power that's going to be needed. We have a few devices that we can test out in our lab. This is looking at the back side of the devices. That's our horn strobe. Here's our strobe only. Notice they use the same terminal boards on all the devices. So if you don't have a speaker, there'll be no wires landed on this side. So your NAC circuit's going to go here. Power for the motor drive here. And if you want to monitor whether the door is open or closed, you can do so with these. The open terminal is open when the door is closed. The wall mounted device is similar, except the terminal board is separated. You wire it, mount it to the back box, then install your device. Because each motor draws approximately 0.6 amps, we'll be using a Honeywell HPF PS10 to apply power to them. We'll start by setting the dip switches to a constant power output for each one. We are going to supply a separate output for each NAC device to power the motors. The power connection is pretty straightforward, plus and minus. When power is applied, the devices close. We have an amp meter hooked up in series with one of the circuits, and we'll see what the current draw of these is. Looks like they max out at about 300 milliamps to do closing the door, and then stabilize at about 90 milliamps to hold it. We've temporarily wired a NAC output from our 50X, and it goes over to our three devices that we have on the bench here, and the devices are being held closed by the power being supplied. We can see that they did not open, so we'll reconfigure this power supply to give it an alarm input, and we'll reset the dip switches for door holder control. Now when the power supply receives an alarm input, it will release the power and open the doors. We'll test that again. The energizing the motors caused the devices to open, so now they're visible. Now that we have those details sorted out, we can add some notes to our drawings so the field technician can get these deployed perfectly the very first time.